Hola, ¿cómo le va? ¿Cómo está usted? Mi nombre es Jim. ¿Qué es su nombre? I greet you in Spanish. And when this uh, devotional plays, God willing, I'm going to be in Argentina. Pray for me. Pray for me today, even though you see me. I'm not here today, not this day. And um, pray for me. I'm going to be meeting, among other things, with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of workers, pastors, wives, obreros, discípulos, trying to encourage pastors who are being brought in from around the, uh, the area of two uh, places, La Plata y Mar del Plata, and also preaching in some other places. Pray that God would use me. I need the Lord. Did you know that? I need the Lord. I've been doing this for a long time. When I started in the ministry, Noah was building his ark. In fact, I used to see him always just hammering that wood. That's when I began. And I feel now, this very moment, do I need the Lord? Oh, do I need the Lord? Next to my picture in the photo album should be, without me, you can do nothing, because I've proven that over and over again. I need the Lord. Now, Jesus has been told to leave town after he delivers a man from demon possession, Verse 18 of Mark 5. And as he was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged him earnestly that he might remain with him. In other words, let me follow you. Let me get in the boat with you. Let me be wherever you are. Jesus did not let him. That's strange. Jesus did not let him, but told him, go home to your own people and report to them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So he went out and began to proclaim in the Decapolis. That's an area around the Sea of Galilee made up of 10 cities. He went around that area and he told them how much Jesus had done for him and they were all amazed. And that's strange. Here's a man who wants to follow Jesus and Jesus said, no, no. You'll do more for the kingdom because of what deliverance that just happened to you. Go back to your own people. Go back to your town and everywhere you can and tell the people what great things the Lord has done for you. Don't tell them what church you go to. Don't tell them what denomination you're part of. Don't give a doctrinal statement. Tell what great things the Lord has done for you. Jesus made this man an evangelist. Wait a minute. He didn't go to school. He must have gone to seminary there in Gadaria. I think he got an MDiv, Masters in Divinity. No. He hadn't even been delivered one day. And the Lord is sending him, just tell the people what great things the Lord has done for you. So let's do real talk. Isn't that something we can all do starting today? As God gives us opportunity. But I don't know enough verses yet. They might ask me questions. Don't worry, God will help you. But tell somebody today the great things the Lord has done for you. Tell them today. Part of your testimony. You don't have to be a, a noted theologian. Tell someone today what you do know. This is what Jesus did. By the way, in my life, that is irrefutable. When you give your testimony, nobody can say, I don't see it that way. I, I don't see that verse that way. I'm not giving you just a verse here. I'm giving you my testimony. I was here. He brought me here. I was lost. Now I'm found. I was corrupt and hard and selfish, and now he's given me a new heart and a new mind. Can't we tell someone that? A lot of people hold back on witnessing 
because they think it's this complicated thing where you have to give four spiritual laws and all of that. This man was told by Jesus, go to your own folks, go to your own people and report to them how much the Lord has done for you. So, something just comes to my heart today. I want to share it with you. I grew up in a Christian home, but before my father started drinking, we had moved to Parkside Avenue in Brooklyn. We were two blocks from the entrance to Prospect Park, a major park in Brooklyn. My friends came to see me one day. I was six, seven, first or second grade, something like that. And they said, come on, Jimmy, we're going to go to the park, run around in the park, about three or four of them. I said, Mom, I'm going to go to the park with them. So well, I was fairly new in the neighborhood. So they told, my mother said, don't go near the lake. You don't know how to swim. Don't go near the lake. So I went with them, and sure enough, we came near the edge of the lake. The lake spread out a lot of areas. And what was on the edge of the lake? On the edge of the lake was, was like some stone, stone edging. And on the, right off the side of it, there was a deflated beach ball. Deflated. And some of the guys were kicking it, you know, kicking it, down to the other end of there, kicking it back. And I went to kick it. And I put my foot slipped on the ball and I fell into the lake. And I started to drown. And my whole life passed before me. All the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches I had ever eaten, they just all came by me. But I was drowning. I remember the panic going down, down. God had a businessman walk by that lake at that moment in the park with an out of shade case, wearing a tan suit. He saw me, heard me screaming. My friends were panic stricken. He put down his out of shade case, probably took his wallet out of his pants and dove in and saved my life. Where I wouldn't have never seen 10 years old. Now, I'm most thankful that he saved my soul but that day, he saved my life. Now, unfortunately, I had to go home. And I was all, you know, when you get nervous and you, or you, you're cold, you fell in the lake and the adrenaline, and I was all like that. And I came to the house, and my mother opened the door, and she saw me like that, all soaking wet. And my friend said, he fell in the lake, he fell in the lake. And I was going, oh, why do you have to say that? Why don't you say there was a sun shower? And my mother took me in, oh, Jimmy, come here, and put me in the tub because I was wet. My father then had come home, and now they both were there. And my mother and dad must have remembered, what? He went near the lake. He fell in the lake. And they proceeded to come in one at a time and beat me in the water, in the tub, whack, whack. When one got tired, tag team. You've seen that. WWF or whatever. Tag team the other one. Whack, whack, whack. I deserved it. Didn't listen. But I'll tell you what else I didn't deserve. Jesus saved my life. Tell somebody today something he's done for you. See you next time. Mm -hmm.